Today's lecture is about uh, mutual funds. Uh, that's uh, how we can calculate uh, different performance measures of mutual funds uh, to change the performance. Uh, for example, we have uh, different performance measures. Uh, you can uh, have a look like uh, we have a sharp ratio. Uh, then uh, we have a train R ratio. And then you can see here. Then we have Jensen Alpha, then Sartino ratio, information ratio, and R scale. Uh, now, the first thing that uh, we should learn that uh, how we can calculate uh, portfolio return. Now, portfolio return is calculated. We need uh, redemption price or ending price of uh, any uh, mutual fund, then dividend distribution, then capital distribution, and then the offer price of uh, that mutual fund that is that we may call it as uh, beginning price and that is divided by beginning price uh, to calculate effective rate of return of uh, any uh, portfolio we basically use extended uh, irr function that is available in uh, excel uh, 365 and its older version as well uh, now what does these uh, uh, ratios tell us uh, like uh, sharp ratio now looking at this sharp ratio the first the nominate the numerator is basically uh, portfolio risk premium uh, it is the average portfolio returns means it is uh, uh, every return of any fund and then that is uh, we subtract average risk free rate and that is divided by uh, portfolio standard deviation so sharp ratio basically tells us that how much extra return that we will receive for additional risk uh, we undertake. Uh, now the second measure is uh, the train R ratio. The train R is the numerator is same. In denominator we have systematic risk, and we know that how we can get this systematic. It, it is basically uh, beta. And we know the interpretation of beta. The interpretation of beta is same as uh, we have already learned in uh, calculation of uh, beta lectures. That if its value of one, it indicates that the mutual fund is as volatile as uh, its uh, benchmark, that is market. And uh, if uh, this value is greater than one, that it, it shows that higher volatility as compared to market. While if it is uh, less than one, it shows uh, lesser volatility. And then we have Jensen Alpha. Uh, if uh, uh, we are using only market factor uh, while calculating beta, uh, then Jensen Alpha uh, can be calculated with the help of this formula. Uh, most of the time, uh, we also use uh, uh, different risk premium in regression model that can also affect li like uh, uh, SMB means size premium, value premium, and momentum factor also affect the rate of return. Uh, so while running uh, the multiple regression model, we can get uh, this alpha. Now, what does uh, Jensen alpha tell us? Uh, if its value uh, is greater than zero, it means that uh, fund uh, performance uh, is uh, outperformed, means fund is performing well as compared to its benchmark. And if its value is less than zero, it means that that fund uh, manager performance uh, is said to be underperformance. Uh, then we have Sartino ratio. Now this is a formula for Sartino ratio in which we have some target return. Uh, we can assume target return as market return as target return, risk-free rate as a, uh, any target return, and it may be any target return. Uh, for a particular uh, period and the, then portfolio return the same as uh, we have done in sharp ratio or train R ratio and then it is divided by downside risk you know uh, we have different measures of uh, downside risk like semi variance and so on but in uh, sartino ratio uh, we have this formula uh, return minus target return square multiplied by ft and i will explain while uh, calculating in excel sheet uh, then we have information ratio. Now, information ratio, uh, we have any uh, target portfolio. Again, the target portfolio may be a market portfolio or it may be another uh, portfolio. And the difference of these two means portfolio return and then the target return. And when we 
calculate its standard deviation, it is called tracking error. So it is divided by uh, tracking error. Uh, so if uh, higher uh, information can be achieved, it means that higher return of the portfolio. So this is usually used to measure the return of actively managed funds against a specific uh, benchmark like uh, any other uh, portfolio or it may be a uh, market. Uh, higher the information ratio, the better would be the fund's performance. And then uh, we have R square. Uh, basically, we uh, calculate R square uh, when uh, uh, we are adopting a passive strategies. And if it is close to one, it means that funds manager performance would be like, uh, like market performance. So this is the brief uh, description of all these performance measure issues. Uh, now we will take the data. For example, we have this data of uh, uh, this is the uh, fund uh, uh, net asset value. Uh, for example, uh, you can take uh, these prices uh, from let's say uh, here we have uh, different funds and just inserting your uh, beginning date and then ending date uh, and you will get the data. Now, after getting this data, then we need to uh, benchmark uh, prices like uh, index. Uh, for example, because it was an equity fund, uh, we will take uh, KSC 100 index data as benchmark. Uh, so here we have KSC 100 index data. Then historical data. And Change the frequency of data to monthly. And then it is in descending order, then press on this data option. Now it is uh, in descending order. Now just download the data. And copy it to here index. Now look at the date. It is basically uh, 31st December 2020. And we need uh, these prices. Just copy it. And we need uh, another data for December uh, 2021. So just another this information into December 21. Okay. Now we need this free rate. For this free rate, uh, again, we go to the website. Uh, just search Google State Bank website. And then State Bank side, we have this economic data option. And in economic data option, after getting this uh, economic data, uh, we will search uh, then uh, treasury bills rate. Uh, now, how just control F and write TRE. Now, here is treasury, uh, auction results latest market treasury bills. Uh, it is an Excel file. I'll just copy it, uh, sorry, download it. And here you can see that uh, we have treasury bills data. Uh, it's older uh, format. And we need, for example, enable editing from 2021, this one. Uh, 30th December, we will take one extra information. And we need up to December, let's say up to this one. Just copy it. Here, we can copy it. Now we need only uh, these risk free rate that are per annum. Now convert into a decimal. Now here we can see that we need month and price. Uh, so month as, uh, so sorry, we need uh, these risk free rate uh, that is ended on uh, last of the month. Uh, for to get these risk free rate, uh, we will use uh, v lookup v lookup function equal to v lookup 
then our lookup dates let's say these states and then our range is where we want to extract only month and date and we need then column two so you can see that we have these uh, end month this free rate so just copy it here and convert into value now uh, we have extracted the data and in next video we will learn that uh, how we can calculate uh, different uh, uh, performance my uh, ratios uh, thank you very much for watching this video uh,